somebody might that, ask based on that on that they may say well hold on we know that taste and and smell kind of get affected with yep. covid what if the ones that were admitted were the ones that maybe and it's not that high lost it's supposed to be five percent but yeah. yeah what if you even argued not five percent but 90 percent of them lost their taste and smell and that's why you're not testing it yeah great question and that was why it was really exciting to do the prospective study so we designed the prospective study so prospective meaning meaning before they got infections yes you, you tested beforehand group, you follow a cohort of people through covid right and so what we did was because of the assumption that you lose your smell and taste and that's why the receptor is altered we took hospital workers mm -hmm. um, tested them to their expression of this receptor, tested okay. them PCR for active COVID, okay. tested them antibody to prior infection. To Make COVID. sure they didn't already have it. You got it. it. If they had a positive PCR or antibody, they were excluded from this study. Okay, so you made sure that these people did didn't, not have an active or passed by any, the best testing we had, that they did not get COVID yet. You got it. Okay. And then did a genetic analysis on a subgroup of those to see how accurate our interpretation of this phenotypic expression was. Okay, so you so you measured how sensitive are they to bitterness and how well can they taste? And then you went in the background and actually looked at their genetics and what to see what they the correlation have, was. Okay, Then That's followed important. them until they got COVID or a group of them got COVID, right? And repeated the taste test to see Afterwards. when they lost their smell and taste did the taste change? Did their expression or their perception of bitterness change oh. after they got COVID? To test that previous theory, is you it because it. they lost it? Okay, and? Had none fall out of their group. So some people change on a level of about two out of 10, 20%, and that's just, that's basically subjectivity. Right. But did not have anyone change groups. And how many was that that did get COVID that didn't change? Well, or per the have, study, okay. the study's around 235. Okay. We've now tested over 17,000, have had about 2,000 convert to COVID and have tested those and have still not had any more. So they don't. So that addresses that one theory is like, well, maybe they just are looking like non-expressors and that's why they got admitted because they lost it. But really, it much higher numbers it shows you don't really lose that taste yeah. with, the, with the COVID. So At least not to this receptor. To because this receptor, that's an interesting sorry. point. Yeah. It does it does contribute to taste, but it's not truly part like taste and smell, right? It's not your smell. Right. It does contribute to bitterness, but it's actually what the taste test is, uh -huh. is a series of chemicals that are known direct stimulants of this receptor. And when the receptor activates, you perceive it as a bitter taste. It's not like you're, it's not like a flavor. Right. right? So that makes sense. That's an important concept. It's the chemicals that stimulate an arm or a protein or receptor. And then that guy is the one that makes like the perception of taste. You got it. It's not the fact that the taste or flavor then jogs the receptor and says, hey, make this yes. you know, connection. Yeah. My name is Dr. Sanjay Janeja at Dr. Pedia. If you're finding this information valuable, click here for more content.